in this lesson we're going to go ahead and take a look at installing the printer and document services. Now this is going to turn my server into a print server which is going to allow me to make a printer or install a printer on this computer and then share it with all the other computers on my domain and not just only share it but I can actually push it out or force the computers to have this printer on there. The wonderful thing about this is that I can make add just one printer here and then if I have like a hundred or a thousand clients out there as far as my workstations are concerned all of them can have this new printer. If a printer goes out of commission I can remove it on this particular computer, the server, and it's removed on all the computers. And if I want to add a new one then it applies to all the computers which makes it wonderful to manage it from one location rather than having to go to each computer manually and installing it. So to begin with I'm going to click on the server manager and we're going to go ahead and add the role of printer and document services. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add roles and this pops up and this is going to allow me to click next here. We're going to click on printer or print and document services. We're going to go ahead and hit next, next and we're going to leave just the print server for this particular lesson enabled so we'll hit next again and then install and it should only take a minute for this to install. So you can see now that it has installed successfully. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And what I want to focus in on is the tool right here. If I click on Start, Administrative Tools, a tool called Print Management. And this is going to allow me to add printers and, and also deploy printers out to all of the computers that are on the domain or specific departments when we get into actually setting up organizational units or groups that are going to be set up in our domain. So what I want to work on here is just to click on print servers. You can see that's right here. This is the name of the computer that I just installed the printer and document services role on. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and you'll see it expand. Here's the printers. Now by default Microsoft puts on this thing called Microsoft XPS Document Writer. That's the default printer if you have no other printers on there that you can use to write to. However, I want to go ahead and add another printer and I'm going to go ahead and right click here in an empty space and just choose add printer. Now there are a couple ways of doing that. I just chose to right click. It's usually the easiest to do. So you can see here if I have a network printer, basically a printer that's plugged into my network either through the Ethernet cable or wirelessly, I can go ahead and search for it by IP address by this option right here. If I click next you can go ahead and type in the IP address itself and then have it automatically detect and so forth. I'm going to go back to the screen here. Since I do not have that set up on this particular network, what I'm going to do is just install a fake computer basically or just set up a parallel port computer itself, a local one that's not on the network and it's really not going to do any checking for it. So what I want to do is just kind of use that for this example. So I'm going to choose a LPT or a parallel port printer and click on this and hit next. Now you can see here I've got a couple different options. I'm going to go ahead and install a new driver. I'm going to leave that. Now the list is going to pop up here of a list of all the printers that are available for me. So I'm just going to look for a printer. I like the HP let's see LaserJet 4100s and that, that'll give us something here to work with. Let's see, LaserJet 4100, there it is, series PCL6. We're going to go ahead and use this one for this lesson. I'm going to hit next. You can see of course the name of the printer shows up here. You can name it whatever you want. I can call it something more descriptive like maybe the front office printer or a name of somebody's office that's in there. Uh, to make it a little bit more descriptive or you can just leave the default names. So I'll just call it front office here and you can of course type in a location and comment. They're not necessary to have the uh, printer name and the share name though you do want to have that on there. And You can see it's going to share this printer as well. I'll hit next and I'll go ahead and hit next again and it's going to go ahead and install this printer and you're going to see now that it has finished. I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. If you click on start, if you watch the previous lesson, you'll notice how to share folders and so forth on the computer, how to view them. I'm going to type in the UNC path, the backslash, backslash, the name of my server is SRV-1, and just go ahead and hit enter. You're going to see that the front office printer has been shared, as well as some of the shared folders that I currently have. Now, that's one way of accessing it from a client computer. However, you'd still have to manually go to every client computer out there and actually go to it and double click on this to install it. That's not the most ideal way of doing it. Really the most ideal way of doing it is to deploy the printer itself. If you click on deployed printers, I currently have no deployed printers. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the printers. There it is. And actually I'm just going to right click on it 
the printer that I want to deploy and choose deploy with group policy. Now group policy is going to be in some future lessons. It's going to be basically manipulating the settings that are available on computers and basically making changes to computers based on either the whole entire domain or organizational units that we will set up here as well in the future ones. You don't have to worry about that right now. Just go ahead and click on deploy with group policy and you can see this is the printer, the front office printer and I've got some options. Now the group policy object if you're not familiar with it, there is a group policy object called default domain policy. And I'm going to go ahead and choose browse. There it is, the default domain policy. This applies to every computer that is a member of the domain. And this is kind of like the catch-all for everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit OK. And I've got the option now here between user and machine itself. We can actually apply this to every user on our network and or we could also apply it to the machines and I'm gonna go ahead and actually apply it to both and hit add. This will apply it so no matter if whoever the user is that logs in or if anybody else logs on the computer on that particular machine that's on our domain it'll be set up for both of those. So that's kind of like a safe way of doing it having them both on there for this particular application. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and you'll see that it said it was on uh, the deployment or removal operation had succeeded so I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and what you're going to notice is nothing different changes here. However, if I click on deploy printers, you can see there it is. The front office printer has been deployed. This is the name of the server that it's located on. And it's being applied both to the users and the computers that are on the domain itself. So now we actually need to test this. And so let's go ahead and test this by switching over to a client, a Windows 7 computer that's on my domain. Now that I've got my client logged on here, there are a couple ways of doing this. Now if you had the client already logged in, you may not have the settings take effect right away. And that's because sometimes the group policy may take a while. Sometimes a restart or log off and log back in will do that. There is a command I can type in just to make sure it's done and it's just GP update. That's the group policy update. If I hit enter, it's going to go through and check to see if there's been any group policy settings from our server that need to apply to this particular client machine. And it'll only take a moment here. After the group policy takes effect, you're going to see it just automatically disappear. And so now what I've got is if I go to start, devices and printers, you should be able to see that actual printer show up. And there it is, the printer showed up. Here are some possible problems. If I have a 64-bit server, and the client is a 32-bit operating system, you may not see it show up just because it only shows up if everything works. And so the drivers have to be the same. 32-bit drivers and 64-bit drivers differ. So that needs to be something that's the same. So keep that in mind as well. Now, if I want to, I can actually go to the shared folder and the shared printers of the actual server itself and see that. If I click on backslash backslash SRV-1, which is the name of my server and I hit enter you're gonna see these these are the items that were shared on my server the printer was one of those things that were shared if you want to manually set it up let's say this was a 32-bit operating system and it did not automatically show up through the group policy then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to have to double click on the actual printer itself and then it will use the drivers on the local machine rather than the 64-bit so the group policy itself would not work the only thing I can do to make that work is I'm going to have to modify the drivers on the actual server to be both 32-bit and 64-bit in order for something like that to work. So let's go ahead and go back to the server itself. And so now that I have the server pulled up, I want to make sure I have printers selected. If you want to install the 32-bit drivers or if you have a 32-bit and you want the 64-bit drivers, you're going to actually need to have the drivers on a disk or a downloaded file. But I'll show you where that's at located at. If you click on your front office printer or the printer you have installed, you can right click on it and go to properties. There are a couple different options we can configure with this particular computer, uh, the preferences and so forth. But if I click on sharing, you'll see here that I have the additional drivers. If I click on that, I can choose to install the 86 bit, which is the 32, or sorry, x86, which is the 32 bit drivers. You can see 64 bit have already been installed. So that I've got that op option to look for those drivers and try to work with both 32 and 64 bit clients on there as well. You're going to notice a couple other things that are in here. Let's see, if I go to the advanced, you can actually send, set when this printer is going to be available from certain time periods as well. If you installed the wrong driver on the printer, you could always go through and find the new printer driver for it if you found a, a better one or a more up-to-date one. So these are some of the settings that are available for this particular printer. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this now. 
and this concludes the video on using the printer and document services to turn a server into a print server on Windows Server 2008.